Hello to everybody out there in Periscope land. This is Brother Ed, and I'd like to welcome you to KJV Bible Scope, and uh, we're going to continue on with our series, our Romans Overview, Part 9. Part 9 of our Romans Overview. And guys, I would... Uh, I'd like to urge you to go back and watch the prior scopes on my recents tab. And what you can do is um, you can uh, watch those and uh, get the verses off of those things and um, study those things yourself. I would encourage you to do that. Um, make sure you get yourself a King James Bible. Anything else would be unacceptable. So guys, um, as we're going to continue on, we're in Romans 3. We've been on Romans 3 for the past quite a uh, past scopes, quite a few scopes we did, Romans chapter 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue on Romans chapter 3, verse 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Now, this is the verse we left off, left off on the last time we were on the scope uh, yesterday, and uh, we had covered some things about every mouth being stopped. You can see the word stop there. It means the law says shut up. So people say, you know, I don't think it's nice as a Christian to tell somebody to shut up, but the Bible says that uh, when we try to get to heaven by keeping the law, the law tells us to shut up. <laughs> that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hold on, guys, just for a second. All right, guys, sorry about that. I am back. Um, I just had to open up a few doors. Uh, we're about to start our service here at the church house, and a lot of people need to get around and do some things. So uh, thank you for being patient with that. I didn't mean to. I normally don't like leaving people waiting on the scope, uh, especially when we're in this important study of Romans. So, guys, um, let's continue on, Romans 3.19. Now, see how I got it highlighted? Stop there that every mouth may be stopped and all the world now what does the world consist of does, does the world consist of only jews does the world only consist of a certain ethnic group or is the world every single person and that's the question because many many people including your your reformists and uh you know presbyterians and so forth um, Calvinists will tell you that world just means world of a certain group of people, like the world of the elect or the world of the Gentiles or the world of the Jews. And th there's a problem with that interpretation because um, the Bible does not teach that. So when we mean all the world, see the word, word all there? All means all the world, not just a certain group of world. <laughs> And it's just weird how people come up with those kind of interpretations, but they are incorrect. The Bible says every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. So that means if you're a human being today, you're guilty before God concerning the law. Guys, if you've got the breath of life in your lungs, you're guilty today because none of us can earn it by keeping the law. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and go over this one. Titus chapter 1 verse 11. Here's another verse that talks about mouths being stopped. Now let's go back. Let's go back to verse 9. Holding fast the faithful word. This would be this bishop right here that has a qualification of being blameless, steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. 
Now, now this is what he does, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught that he may be able to by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Now, 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 now notice it says circumcision there. It doesn't say uncircumcision. Now, remember, we covered that in the last prior scopes that... Um, when we're dealing with circumcision, who are we dealing with? We're dealing with Jews. When we're dealing with uncircumcision, who are we dealing with? We're dealing with Gentiles. And here in Titus 1.10, we're dealing solely with Jews. It says there, there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. And then it says specifically, look, especially they of the circumcision. So what we have is a bunch of Jews that are unruly, a bunch of Jews that are vain talkers, a bunch of Jews that are deceivers. Now, now look what it says about these Jews whose mouths must be stopped. Guys, the, 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 well, I, I'm trying to think of the word that I'm looking for here. The responsibility of the bishop is to put a stop to the mouths of these Jews who would subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. It's their responsibility. It's their priority to do that. Now you say, well, well what do you mean? Uh, what do they mean by, by stopping those mouths? It means they need to tell them to shut up. Look, you need to shut up. Look, if you're going to you're gonna teach, subvert whole houses, and you're going to teach things wh which you should not teach, and for filthy lucre's sake, you need to shut up. You say, I don't think shut up is a nice word. Titus 1.11 is your cross-reference. Shut up is a very nice word if you're using it correctly. So, do we tell people to shut up? Absolutely. Whose mouths must be stopped who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Now, guys, these mouths must be stopped because if you don't, these people will subvert whole houses. These people will continue to teach things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. They will continue to teach that if you do not put a stop to it. So you're in the church, you got to put a stop to that. People calling themselves Jews, they are, the Bible says in Titus 1.10, these certain Jews are vain talkers. They're deceivers. And it says, it, especially they of the circumcision, they're Jews. So we got to keep our eyes peeled for those that would teach things which they ought not, those that would subvert whole houses. Now, guys, what are we dealing with? We're dealing with Romans, obviously. Remember, the whole world may become guilty before God whose mouths must be stopped. The law will stop everyone's mouth. But here we have in Titus 1.11, a bunch of Jews that, that think that they're right about everything, but they're vain talkers and deceivers, and their mouths must be stopped as well. So guys, so what we're dealing with right now is mouths being stopped. Now let's talk about another mouth that needs to be stopped. Let's go to Hebrews 11.33. Now watch this, guys. Who through faith... Now, now let, let's go back. Let's get some context here. And what shall I say, what shall I more say, for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, and of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises. Now, 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 now look, look at this last part right here. Stopped the mouths of lions. Do you know there's there, you know there is a lion's mouth that needs to be stopped that will be stopped. And even though we're dealing with Daniel right here, he stopped the mouths of lions. We got there's another mouth, not not a not a literal lion, a roaring beast, an animal that's in king of the jungle in the wilderness. We're not talking about that lion, even though Hebrews 11:33 is dealing with that kind of a lion. Now we're going to flip this thing over to the other lion. The other lion, the lion that would accuse you, that's Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. 
What do you think this lion was doing? Accusing our brethren. And he's cast down. But he accused the brethren day and night. That's a problem, guys. And you know what's going to happen? God's going to stop the mouth of that lion. He's going to stop his mouth. Guys, what we're dealing with right now is the stopping of the mouths of, of certain people, of certain individuals. And here, Satan's mouth will be stopped in Revelation 12.10. He will be cast down. All right, guys, let's, let's go back to uh, Romans chapter 3. That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Because... These are the ones that are dealing under the law. Now, if you want to deal with God being under the law, your mouth will be stopped. The Bible says, every tongue shall confess unto God that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And when you compare yourself with Jesus Christ, you, you realize that when you stand there in judgment, you realize right then and there, you, you come short of the glory of God. Jesus Christ is the glory of God and you come short of it. And your mouth will be stopped. You say, my mouth won't be stopped right now. It will be stopped. Right now, you've got the freedom to say whatever you want. You've got the freedom to serve sin for a season. And then you're going to be judged. Guys, I don't pray that for, every, for anyone, that your mouth would be stopped. And you'd become guilty before God because you're trying to be a good person by keeping the law. You'll not get there. You'll not get there. Not by keeping the law. All right, guys, we're going to continue on. And this is why you can't get there by keeping the law. Romans 3.20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So the deeds of the law. So people say, don't, don't be a hearer of the word. You need to be a doer of the law, right? Well, well, there it is, Romans 3.20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall, how many, how many fleshes can be justified in his sight by being a doer of the law? See where it says no flesh? No flesh will be justified in his sight. Why? Because you will not be justified if you're trying to earn your salvation. Justification according to salvation from the penalty of sin. Guys, there is no way you can be justified from the penalty of sin by keeping the law. Being a doer of the law will not justify you in the eyes of God. What's the only way you can be justified? Oh, we're about to get into that in the next verse. Okay, so therefore by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now, now, what do you mean now? No, no, we're not, we're not talking about, you know, back then when Jesus Christ died on the cross. He did die on the cross, and he did rise again the third day. But we're saying now, right now, while you and I are talking, back then when they were talking, present time, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. That means after Jesus died on the cross, whoever hears this message, message now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. The manifestation of that righteousness of God without the law is staring at you in the face when somebody tells you what Christ has did on the cross for your sins. But now, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by who? By no one? No, by the law and the prophets. See, there's witnesses. See, guys, how, how many witnesses do you need to make a conviction in a court of law? You only need one witness. And the Bible says, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Guys, we got witnesses for days. We've got witnesses for years. We've got witnesses for centuries, for decades. Guys, witnesses upon witnesses upon witnesses upon witnesses upon witnesses upon witnesses upon witnesses. And still, people will not believe. But the Bible says, but now. The righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Look at verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all 
them that believe. For there is no difference. Let's stop right there. What are we dealing with? The righteousness of God, which is by what? So if I want to have the righteousness of God, it will not be by the law, right? Look at verse 21. It will not be by the law. You cannot get the righteousness of God by keeping the law. How can you get the righteousness of God? By faith of Jesus Christ. That's all you need. The faith of Jesus Christ. My question, guys, is why would you not put your faith on Jesus Christ. Why would you not do that? If you do that according to Romans 3.22, you have the righteousness of God. That's what's needed to be justified in his sight. Verse 20, justified in his sight. So the law can't do it. What does the law consist of? Being a good person, going to church, being religious, walking in the spirit, uh, being holy, you know, be holy for I am holy. Guys, none of that law keeping is going to justify you in his sight. The law, by the law is the knowledge of sin. What we need, guys, is how can we get this righteousness of God and obtain that so we can be justified in the eyes of God. That means to be declared righteous in the eyes of God. In order to be declared righteous in the eyes of God, you have to be righteous in the eyes of God. And none of us are righteous. That's Romans 3.10. We read it before. As it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. So the problem is we don't have any righteousness. And the problem is if without righteousness, we can't be justified in the eyes of God in which God will send us to a literal lake of fire, the eternal prison for all people because they've sinned in the eyes of God. Guys, you got to do something about that. What are you going to do? Are you going to die in your sins? Guys, you're not righteous. You need righteousness. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto how many people? Unto all. And upon how many people? And upon all them that believe. So all you have to do is believe, right? So does it say believe and live a holy life? Or does it just say believe? It just says believe. Now, how many people need to believe? Just the elect or all people? All people. So that means, guys, we're not dealing with elect. What we're dealing with is all human beings. If they would trust in the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, they would be saved and justified in the eyes of God. And look, the Bible makes it clear again. For there is no difference. There's no difference. You say, difference in what? Look at the next verse. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, guys, I've said this countless times on prior scopes. The King James Bible says, for all have sinned and don't fall short. Guys, we don't fall short of the glory of God. If we fell short, that means at one time we were standing up before we fell and we were there. We were never there to begin with. That's why the King James Bible is absolutely correct by saying, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Guys, we come short. We don't fall short. We weren't almost there. Guys, when you when you stand next to Jesus Christ, you don't you don't stand next to him saying, "Jesus, I was standing at one time. I was just as righteous as you were, but I fell short." No, no, that's not what we're saying. I stand next to Jesus and you know what I find? I come short. I come short of the glory of God. What is the glory of God? What are we dealing with in the context of Romans 3? We're dealing with the righteousness of God. And the glory of God isn't some kind of a glow emanating from God's body. It's not some Leonardo da Vinci painting of some halo on, on Jesus' head or, or some glowing white clothes where, there, where everybody's just blown away by this massive glowing of the white garment of Jesus. No, guys, that's not what the glory of God is. The glory of God is Jesus Christ's righteousness. It's the righteousness of God. That's the glory of God. And we come short of the glory of God, the glory of his righteousness. We all come short of that. 
That's why you need Jesus Christ. That's why you need the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, Romans 3.22. You need that. And if you don't have that, the Bible says, you're going you're gonna to end up dying in your sins because you don't have any righteousness. You say, but I do good things all the time. You may do good things, but the Bible says all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Let's quote, let, let's give you the verse. Isaiah 64, 6. Look what it says. Now, even though this is written to Jews, we can apply this to all humanity. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And that's, that answers the question, but I do good things. I have some righteousnesses that I do do. You may do some righteousnesses. You may do some good things. Mother Teresa went to a third world country. She did a lot of great things. But all the things she done, if she was trying to earn salvation, are nothing but filthy rags in the eyes of God because they cannot save you. They cannot justify you in the eyes of God. How's it going there, Des? Look, and we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. So we're not saying you don't have any righteousnesses. We're not saying people don't do good things. We're saying those good things that anybody does cannot save you. The good things that we do cannot justify us. The things that we do do not equal to the righteousness of God. They're nothing but filthy rags. See that? Our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. So guys, we need to see that even though Isaiah 64 is written to the nation of Israel, we can apply this to all humanity because anything good that any human can do is nothing but a filthy rag in the eyes of God. And, that, and when we understand that, then the understanding of why Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins will, will, will become manifest in, in, our, in our imaginations and in our hearts and in our understanding, okay? We need to understand this, that all of our goodnesses don't measure up to Jesus Christ. That's why it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are all sinners. You say, preacher, on this periscope, you're saying you're a sinner too? Absolutely. I am a sinner, and I agree with Paul when he says, I'm the chief of sinners. I, I classify myself as a chief of sinners. And guys, and if you're and if you're true and honest in the eyes of God, you will classify yourself too as the chief of sinners because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why you need the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. See, there is no difference. You call yourself a Jew? There is no difference. You call yourself a Gentile? There is no difference. You, you think your skin is black and better than everybody else? There is no difference. You think you're white and you're better than everybody else? There is no difference. You think you're Mexican and you're better than everybody else? There is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It doesn't matter what walk of life you come from. It doesn't matter what nationality you are. We are all sinners in the sight of God. That's why you need Jesus Christ. Christ. That's why he died on the cross for our sins. Look at the next verse. Being justified. You want to be justified in the eyes of God? Freely, freely by his grace. Through how? Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. How can you be justified? In Christ Jesus. It's by his what? By his grace or by his nationality or by the color of his skin? How am I justified? Come on, can, does anybody know how to read Romans 3.24? Amen, Des, amen. Can, how are you justified? Anybody? Nope, I got, I got a bunch of people on here. Nobody knows how to be justified. It says freely by his grace through what? Through the redemption that is in Jesus' color of his skin. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. <laughs> see, see, that's the problem, guys. People don't read the Bible. They hold on to some kind of skin color. Now, now, now look, look, guys. For all have sinned. Who is all? Who is all? See, people want to stay away from Romans 3. You see that? They got to go everywhere else but Romans 3 because they don't know how to reconcile Romans 3. And when I say for all have sinned, what does all mean? All means everyone, Jew and Gentile. They are all under sin. Let's prove it. Let's prove it. 
<coughs> what then? Are we better than they? Are we Jews better than they, Gentiles? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are what? We, didn't we just say this? That they are all under sin. Amen. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. You think you're keeping the law? There is none righteous, no, not one. You think you're black and you're right in the eyes of God? There is none righteous, no, not one. You think you're white and you think you're good in the eyes of God? There is none righteous, no, not one. You better get Jesus Christ and not the color of your skin. You better get Jesus Christ and not your ethnicity. You better get Jesus Christ, not your lineage. Jesus is the way out, not the color of your skin. Okay, guys, that, that, that stuff needs to be said because people hold on to skin color and, and they bring their racial hatred into the Bible. It's wicked, man. It needs to be rebuked. Now, we know that what things soever the law saith, what does the law say? It says to them who are under the law, that's Jews, right? Aren't Jews under the law? That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Are you a Jew? You need to shut up with your law because your mouth needs to be stopped. That's what the Bible says, Romans 3.19. You need to shut up. If, if you're trying to keep the law, you need to shut up. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm not being mean. This, this is the Bible, guys, Romans 3.19. See that? Every mouth may be stopped. See, your mouth, if you're trying to keep the law, your mouth, your mouth needs to be stopped. Why? Because you're guilty. You're already guilty before God. Guys, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh. That's Jew. Are you a Jew today? Are you a black Hebrew Israelite today? No flesh shall be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. You see that? How about that? You have the knowledge of sin and you will not be justified by keeping the law. Not in the eyes of God. You might be justified in your own eyes according to your priest you know, of all your Israelite unite stuff and all your, your Tazadakia wicked um, black Hebrew Israelite stuff, you might be justified in their eyes, but that's not the Bible. That's not the one true God that we serve. But now, the righteousness of God without the law. Okay, now, 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 now let's, oh, there will be no foul language on my scope. Sorry, I got to block you. Okay, so... But now, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. So it, how is the righteousness of God manifested? Is it manifested with the law or without the law? <laughs> it's manifested without the law. You see that? That's pretty crystal clear. The righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So even the Jewish and the Israelite nation in the Old Testament witnessed the righteousness of God without the law, and it is manifested in such a way that the nation of Israel testifies of this. How about that? Romans 3.22. Even the righteousness of God. Hey, there will be no foul language on my periscope. Bye-bye. Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ. So if you want the righteousness of God, what do you need to have? Faith of Jesus Christ. That's the Bible, guys. That's the Bible. You don't have to like the Bible, but then don't say you believe the Bible. <laughs> Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto Jews. No. Unto black people. No. Doesn't say that. Unto white people. No. Doesn't say that. Unto Haitians, nope, doesn't say that. Unto Chinese people, nope, doesn't say that. Unto all and upon all them that believe. So that, that includes every single human being on the face of the planet. You, if you put faith in Jesus Christ, no matter who you are, if you're a young lion, a young devil, you could be a young, a, a young fallen angel, if you put, no, I'm not saying a fallen angel, angels, fallen angels can't get saved, okay? But uh, if you call yourself a fallen angel, you could still be saved by the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all 
and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. There's no difference between Jew and Gentile. Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Are you a Jew today? Are you, are you, a, are you Israelite? Are you an Israelite? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Are you part of the 10 tribes? Are you part of the two tribes? <laughs> are you part of northern tribes? Are you part of southern tribes? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Are you Judah? Are you Benjamin? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified, <laughs> being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So how do you get redemption? Guys, anybody know how to get redemption? No, anybody know how to get justified? I asked that already, but obviously it doesn't sink in because people's people are stiff-necked. They're stiff-necked. <laughs> hey, what's up, Maggie? Good, good of you to join us. You caught us in the middle of a bunch uh, of a few black Hebrew Israelites trying to join in my scope, trying to say that we're, we're sick because we believe uh, Romans three. <laughs> They, they, they hate Romans 3. No no black Hebrew Israelite likes Romans 3. So um, we're just going through Romans 3, okay? So here we go. Justified freely. How can you be justified? <laughs> we are justified. How, how much money do we have to pay to be justified? Anybody see where I'm highlighting it? How much money do you have to pay? How, 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 many, how much tithes do you have to pay to the black Hebrew Israelite synagogue, to the, to the synagogue of Satan? Um, I don't have to pay anything to the synagogue of Satan. Um, them that call Jews and are not Jews, I don't have to pay anything to them because I'm justified freely by his grace. Grace is unmerited favor. God gives me unmerited favor the moment I believe on Jesus Christ and I'm freely justified. Through what? Through the redemption. See, I am redeemed. Jesus Christ has redeemed me. He bought me with a price. And how did he do that? It was by me believing on him, Christ Jesus. That's all I needed to do. I didn't need to paint my skin black. I didn't need to paint my skin white. All I had to do is freely trust in Jesus Christ and he gave me his grace and he redeemed me from my sins. And therefore, when God looks at me, now here, I'm going to highlight it. I am justified. I am declared righteous in the eyes of God. Now look at, look at 325, whom God has set forth to be a what? A propitiation through what? Through color of his skin. It doesn't say that through faith in his blood. You see that? He is the propitiation. He satisfied the wrath of God. Guys, that's what Jesus did for us. That's what we need, guys. We need Jesus Christ. He is our righteousness. He is our propitiation. He is our grace. He's given us his grace. But he is our grace, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through what? Through faith in his blood. That's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. His blood. What is the blood that he shed? The blood that he shed was 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And if I put my faith and trust in his blood, what he did on the cross for my sins, I am justified freely by his grace through the redemption that's in Christ Jesus. Amen. To what? To declare his righteousness. For what? For the remission of sins. How can I get remission of sins? It's by his righteousness. And when that righteousness is declared to me, I have the opportunity to believe on it. And I can get that righteousness, obtain that righteousness of Jesus Christ and get remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. How about that? Ain't that great? God has forbearance towards me. God has forbearance towards you. You could get the remission of sins if you would simply believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Guys, you could be declared righteous in the eyes of God if you'd simply believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You could have the grace of God if you simply believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You could be redeemed from your sins if you would simply believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. See, Romans 3, 24 and 25, they all cross-reference the rest of the Bible. You couldn't mess that up if you wanted to, but yet people will find a way to mess it up because Satan's always involved in that. Now look, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness. What are we declaring, guys? What are we declaring? His, not our righteousness, his righteousness, not the color of our skin. We're declaring his righteousness. Well, I mean, guys, we don't want to know what color Jesus's eyes are because he never, he never, he's never proclaiming. We needed to know that. What are we declaring? His righteousness. And if you're not declaring his righteousness, there's something wrong with your motive. If you're not declaring the righteousness of Jesus Christ, there's something wrong with your view of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness. Now, now look what it says. That, what? See the coal in there? We're about to explain it. That he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. So, he might be just. Well, he can only be just. That's why it says might. He could only be just if you believe on him. I mean, obviously he's still just, but just in your eyes? The only way you can really see how just Jesus Christ really is, is the moment you trust and believe on him. Then the understanding will come to you. Look, and the justifier of him, which believeth in Jesus. So if you believe in Jesus... Jesus Christ is the justifier. He's just. And the only the just can be the justifier. And that's Jesus Christ. Now, if you believe on him, he will, ju he will justify you. Don't you want to be justified from your sins? Well, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the just, you could be justified from your sins because Jesus is the justifier. See, guys, it all checks out. You want his righteousness? The only way to get that is through Jesus Christ. You want remission of sins? The only way to get that is through Jesus Christ. You want to be declared righteous? You only can get that through Jesus Christ. Do you want to be justified by the justifier? You can only get that through Jesus Christ. It's believing in Jesus. Will you do that? If you haven't believed in Jesus, it doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how many times you go to church. It doesn't matter how many times you celebrate Christmas and Easter. Those, those, aren't, those days aren't Christian anyways. But it doesn't matter, guys. It doesn't matter how good you think you are. You are not justified in the eyes of God until you've trusted and believed on Jesus Christ. He's the only way out of sin. He's the only way to gain righteousness. He's the only way that God can look at you and declare you righteous when he sees Jesus in you, the hope of glory. And if you don't have Jesus in you, the hope of glory, you have no hope of glory. Guys, I don't want to see you die in your sins. God doesn't want to see you die in your sins. 2 Peter 3, 9 says, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Guys, it doesn't matter with your education level. Would you hear the gospel and believe it? Would you believe what Christ has done for you on the cross? It doesn't matter if you're in a hospital. It doesn't matter how sick you are. It doesn't matter if you're out on the street and you're in a gang. It doesn't matter if you're rich and you're increased in goods. Will you drop what you're doing and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? He died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day. He didn't die for a certain group of people. He died for the world. He died for everyone. He didn't specifically keep it to a certain color of skin. He died for the world. He died for everyone. He wants you to be saved, but if you don't believe on him, even though he died for you, you will not be saved because the condition of being saved is believing on him. We say it over and over and over again. Believing. See where I got it highlighted? He's the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. If you don't believe you're not saved, we're not universalists. We don't believe ultimately everybody will be saved. You must believe or you're not saved. Um, nope. 
that doesn't save you there, Lisa. Um, you must believe in the gospel. The gospel, it's very clear, Romans 3, 25 and 26. You must believe that Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day because you need to put your faith in his blood. Right there, Romans 3, 25. Faith in his blood. And what does that mean? That means the blood that he shed upon the cross of Calvary. And if you don't believe on that, you're not saved. It doesn't. The devils believe in God. The devils believe in God. People that believe in God are no different from devils. Guys, believing in God, believing... Look, 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 guys. Having the knowledge of everything that I told you doesn't save you. You've got to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ according to the Word of God. And if you don't put your faith and trust in the Word of God according to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that He died for your sins, He was buried and rose again the third day and you don't put your trust and belief in that now there's two definitions of belief you can know the facts and believe the facts and you can also trust and that's another definition of belief trusting putting your faith and trust in something that's two different definitions of belief so we don't have the belief of the devils what we have is a living belief we have a justified belief, a belief and tr trust in Jesus Christ. And if you don't have that, you're not saved, according to Romans 3.25 and 26. So guys, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now, that was a great question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back that up with Ephesians 1.13. Let's do it. Here it is. Now, now this is how you get saved. That we should should be to the praise of his glory who what who first trusted in in god or christ who first trusted in christ so you what what's the first thing you need to do when you get saved you need to trust in christ now let's explain trusting in christ in whom ye also tr trusted that's past tense see trusted after that ye heard so you've already heard it heard the word of truth okay what word of tr truth did you hear well it's going to answer you right here the gospel of your salvation now look what did you do with it in whom also after that ye believed so you believed the gospel of your salvation now what happened after that ye were sealed with that holy spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until when? Until the next time you sin or until the redemption of the purchased possession? It's until the redemption of the purchased possession. Guys, you're saved until the redemption of the purchased possession and your body's changed because that's the rapture. The rapture comes and your body is changed. And God now redeems that purchased possession meaning the changing of the body but right, right now you get a down payment right now you get the Holy Ghost the moment you believe and trusted the word of truth which is the gospel of your salvation what's the gospel of your salvation Christ died for your sins he was buried and rose again at the third day that's how you're saved that's the gospel of your salvation have you believed on that if you believed on that you're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise until the redemption of the purchased possession. Praise the Lord. Look, unto the praise of his glory. All right, guys, um, that was pretty good. I mean, I, I didn't think we could get too far. Um, let's see, in Romans 3, because we did cover Romans 3, 24 and 25. I mean, this is an exclusive, guys. I mean, con conclusive, because we could spend for the rest of our lives on these three verses, uh, 24, 25, and 26. I mean, there is so much to preach on that, you could never get to the end of it. I mean, it's there's there's been countless numbers of books written on Romans 3, 24, 25, and 26. Guys, it, it, it's so so good. I, 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 I would uh, encourage you to go back 
and read Romans 3 and work yourselves to Romans 3, 24, 25, and 26 and get a, get a, a scriptural understanding of these verses. And they'll help you guys. It'll help you. All right, guys. Now, now um, thank you for joining me. My service is about to start at six o'clock. So, um, Lord willing, I might do a scope later on this evening. I may scope the church service as well. How can you know God is true? The Bible said, well, the Bible says we we have that in Yeah, well yeah, you have to believe it. It's by grace through faith. It didn't say by grace through evidence. So you're going to have to put your faith that you already have. Now e every human being's got faith. The problem is is what are you going to put your faith in? Is it going to be in science? Is it going to be in, in in evidences of science? Is it going to be in archaeology or is it going to be in yourself is so god has dealt with every person in a measure of faith now what are you going to put your, your faith in will it be in jesus christ and that's what we're, we're asking right now so the bible says you already know it's true i don't have to convince you through evidences that god is true the bible says you already know romans 1 says for that when they knew god they glorified him not as God. So every human being, according to lost people, we're, we're dealing with lost people. Every lost person knows there's a God. He's manifested himself within them innately. He's innate. Let, let me flip the screen real quick and we'll just close out with, with this, guys. God, God has innately put a manifestation of himself within every human being. So, so no human being can say, well, I don't, I don't know if God, God exists or not. No, you know. Everybody knows. There's no excuse. That's what the Bible says in Romans 1. I think it's around 112 that we are without excuse. So here's, here's, here's some of the things that all human beings know. Whether they heard of Jesus, whether they heard of the Bible or not. They know that God exists. They know a judgment's coming. They have a conscience. They know the difference between right and wrong, and they know God has put that law in their hearts. They know these things, and that's just a few. I'm not, I'm not, we're not even on that right now, but I'm just giving you a few. So, all human beings know that God exists. Now, when I go to the Word of God, the Bible says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, Romans chapter 10. And you're hearing the word of God right now. And when you hear the word of God, no person can say that's not true. Unless you're willingly, unless you're willingly deceiving yourself. And that's, that's what we call holding the, excuse me. That's what we call holding the truth in unrighteousness. That's what it's called. If you, you can deceive yourself all day long and say, well, I know God doesn't exist. You're deceiving yourself yourself into make trying to make yourself believe that it's called self-deception i don't want you guys to be self-deceived what you need to do is respond to what you know to be true and then when you hear the word of god when we we, we talk about the gospel that christ died for your sins he was buried and rose again the third day you simply believe on jesus christ because you know him to be true and you trust in him you trust in his resurrection because you know it to be true. Guys, I don't have to convince you. I mean, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So the, hopefully there, there's, a, there's an answer to your question there. It was a great question, and thank you for asking it. And um, so I'm going to end it right, right here, guys. Lord willing, I'll do another scope um, a little bit later on, Lord willing, and then um, after the service, and I'll, I may um, scope the service as well. So you guys uh, might want to get in on, on that and watch that. That, okay so guys thank you for joining me um look back at the scope uh, read these things out and study them for yourselves okay guys may the lord richly bless you and have a great evening